I'm going to show you how to use GIMP and the fonts to be able to change the fonts that you're working with while you're doing text in GIMP. So I have a window here, which is a GIMP window. GIMP is a uh, free Photoshop clone that you can use graphics and all sorts of other things. And one of the abilities it has is to let you add text to your documents or images or whatever. So if we look over here in the top left in the toolbar, you've got all sorts of different tools you can work with. One of them looks like the letter A, and if you point to it, it tells you that this is your text tool to create or edit text layers. So we're just going to click on the letter A to select our text tool. We're going to click to start a spot and drag out to make an area, which is our text area now. So I just dragged and then released to make this rectangle. And now if I click in here, I can type in, this is uppercase, this is lowercase. So by default, it used whatever my default font, which was in this case, the Gretsch font. And if you click and hold on one side of it and drag, then it will select all of that font. So all of these letters are now selected for me to do things to them. So if I want to change their size, I just select the size up here and change them all to 50. And if I make sure that they're selected, and then I go over here to the top left, to the area where it tells me what the different options are for this font. One of them is that it shows me in a little tiny size what a capital A and a lowercase a looks like. And if I click on that capital A and lowercase a, then I get a list of all the other Windows fonts that I have access to. It's important to note that GIMP, like all other Windows programs, use all the Windows fonts. It's not like you install fonts for GIMP. You install fonts for Windows, and then GIMP sees them, and Photoshop sees them, and Word sees them, and so on. So it's showing you little tiny itsy bitsy <laughs> letters, which is a royal pain. But again, these fonts are available to everything. So it's very easy to go into Windows and to see much bigger uh, options to show what they look like or go into you know, whatever other programs you use, um, your, your Word clone or so on. So you don't have to rely, rely on these tiny little letter options here in GIMP to be able to select. You make yourself cheat sheets in Word or whatever else you want to use. But here we'll choose Henny Penny. So that's what Henny Penny looks like. Click on the capital A lowercase. We'll choose HoloLens. We will click on Impact, one of the favorites for doing fonts for uh, YouTube videos in the 17. So there's just all sorts of fonts in here, Joker Man. So then you might have the question of how you add new fonts into Windows so that you get some cool fonts to be able to put on your book covers or whatever else you're working on. So we're going to open up a new window. We're going to go to Font Squirrel. Uh, there's all sorts of fonts sites like this out there. They offer free fonts. And it's important to always look at the uh, codes and read the descriptions to know which fonts you can use for yourself, which fonts you can use for books you're selling, and so on. But if you look over here, you see there's just tons and tons of fonts available. Let's look at oh, display fonts. All right, so these are just some of the display fonts. They've got grunge and rough and retro and novelty. Here, let's look at novelty. So all sorts of really cute fonts like this Aftershock thing. And the little icons tell you which types of uh, applications it's able to be used for. If you can put it for ebooks or if you can put it just for the web or so on. So this Aftershock font looks pretty cool. And for every font, you'll be able to download the T TF or OTF or other things. These are all just font definition files. So like, let's say we like this Aftershock font. We're going to download the TTF, which is its definition file. It downloads it. We're going to click on the zip file. So it says that here's the Aftershock TTF. All you have to do is double click on the TTF file. It's going to show you exactly what this font looks like and all the letters and all the numbers, and there'll be an install button there. So it's all very straightforward. You download the font, you click to take a look at it, and then you click to install. So I'm clicking to install Aftershock. Once you have got the font installed, it does not instantaneously show up in your application because when this application loaded, it loaded up your current list of fonts, and now we've added something new to it. So what we have to do is we're going to shut down GIMP, uh, discard the changes. We're going to start up GIMP again. So we've got GIMP running fresh again. So when it loaded up fresh, it loaded up what the current fonts that were available to it are. We're going to do a file new, just to get a new random file to work with. 
we're going to click on the letter A, which is the text tool, to create a new text area. We're going to click and hold and drag and release to make a new area to work with this in. And we'll say this is uppercase, this is lowercase, and then we're going to drag and hold over all of that to select it. And now if we go over to this uppercase A, lowercase A area to choose our font options, if we go up to the very top under the letter A, there should be something called Aftershock. So that's the font that we just downloaded. And it just so happens that in this font that there is no lowercase, that everything is uppercase because that's the way the font designers had it. But if we do A, B, Z, or what else we got in here? Agency, you know, we've got hundreds of fonts that I've installed in my windows because I do all sorts of font kind of work. Um, Adeus. But I think you get the gist of it. So in GIMP, you just click on the A text tool to get access to the text tool. You drag and release to make the area where the text tool is going to be. You type in your text and then you select it by clicking on one side, dragging to the other side and releasing. And then up here under text, you have access by clicking on the little uppercase A, lowercase A to choose whatever font you want. And again, it's sort of a pain in GIMP because it only shows you a tiny little sample of what this font's going to look like in that uppercase, lowercase area. But since these fonts are consistent across the entire Windows experience, you can then go into Word or whatever else you use and make yourself a cheat sheet so that you can see exactly what your font looks like with all the different letters and all the different uppercase and lowercase. So let me know if you have any questions at all about how fonts work in GIMP and how to add fonts into Windows. And I hope you have a lovely afternoon.